Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for another episode of The Financial Commute. I'm your host, Chris Galeski, joined by Wealth Advisor Mike Rudeau. Mike, thanks for joining us. No, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. I was inspired by a white paper that you recently wrote on the pitfalls of selling a business without a plan. And initially, I thought about it. It's like, okay, who's going to sell a business without a plan? But then I remembered I worked at Fidelity for seven years, and the number of people that would just come walking into the branch saying, oh, I recently retired and I need to deposit this check into my retirement account and I'd like to talk some talk to somebody about retiring or I just sold this business, I need to open an account and deposit this check. It actually happens. There are another p- number of people that go through major life decisions without structuring it or planning it out completely and then they deal with it after the fact. Yeah. So I was inspired by your article. Thank you for, for coming on here today to, to talk about it. Oh, no, my pleasure. And, and I'm glad you had the opportunity to read it and you could identify with it because you've experienced that, right? Most business owners start their business from scratch. And, and these guys, they're, they're hardworking, they're dedicated. Um, and every decision that they make, right, is based on the lifestyle that they want to create for themselves. And because of that, they're so entrenched in the business that they're not thinking about a necessary exit. They're relying on the income. Um, they're relying on this business to support their day-to-day life. So when you get to that point, you look back and you're like, okay, either they're burnt out or, or a life event happens and now they're forced to sell the business and the business isn't prepared for a sale. And so they ended up leaving a lot of money on the table. So the paper was to, to really identify, one, that the most important thing is that you need to have a personal, uh, a financial plan and a business plan that align with each other. Yeah. All three legs of the stool, right? They have to be working in tandem. Um, and any good exit plan should have three main characteristics. One, you want to be able to um, to maximize the transferable value of the business. Two, you need to understand what you need to sell the business for from a, a net after tax basis to replace the income from the business and continue to live the lifestyle that you want. Because if that comes back and, and your business valuation is less than what you need, well, then you need to to grow the business and develop a plan for how to grow and, and have the right uh, professionals around you for that. And if, if the business is at a point where you can sell it, then great. And how you build a transition team. And what does that look like? It looks very different than a growth team. And the third one that's mostly overlooked is the personal identity part of it. It's okay. Well, my identity is tied to this business. The business is no longer there. Who am I? What am I going to do to, to fill my time? Am I going to buy another business? Am I going to do philanthropic work, sort of work? There's a lot of, of discussions and a lot of decisions that need to be made that for, for the most part, people don't think about till after they transition their business and then they regret selling the business because they feel lost. Yeah. I mean, there's a famous quote that says something along the lines of a, a, a goal without a plan is just a wish. Right. <laughs> and you see it a lot in life where somebody goes through a big transition, they sell a business, they retire, they move on to something else and they say, oh, I'm going to... I'm going to deal with my life or figure it out after the fact. And they might think that they're going to enjoy sitting on the beach, reading a book. And a few months in, they're depressed, they're bored, they're not inspired. And they find out that they really enjoyed some part of the work that they were doing. And they didn't have that plan for how they were going to spend their time. Right. But then also on the flip side of that, when you run and operate a business, you need to know, first and foremost, whether or not there's value in that business or if it's a lifestyle business, because that's a wake up call for many business owners. And it, it could be a, a, a several year transition plan to prepare your company for a sale. Oh, absolutely. Um, it takes time to build a significant business. There's a difference between a significant business and a successful business. A successful business could have a, a really healthy income. Right, it provides a great lifestyle for the employees. The employees could be happy. There could be a good company culture, but a successful business could be owner dependent. If the owner is centralized to the business, they're the main decision maker. There's a lot of tribal knowledge there. Maybe they only understand um, the the different you know variables of the business, or they're the ones that are driving the relationships with the manufacturers, the distributors. If something happens to that owner. That business is no longer that thriving business, and that is a hard business to transfer. There's not a lot of transferable value there. So the goal with exit planning is to pull the owner out of the business, right? The owner is now the visionary of the business, but you're creating structure. You're creating processes. You're implementing the right technologies. You have job descriptions. You have a vision for the the business so that 
when the owner steps away, any buyer that's out there that's coming in to buy the business isn't taking on a lot of risk because they know, okay, oh, we, we have a process. There's you know a job description to fill that position. There's a, a training manual that we can um, put any new hire in and we'll get caught up to speed so this business doesn't um, lose momentum. So, so those are the types of things that we want to work on with business owners to make sure that any buyer that's coming in isn't taking on risk. And if they are taking on too much risk, all they're going to do is discount that price and the owner's going to end up with less than they intended. Yeah, those are those are two great points about the article, the, the owner centralization and then having a plan uh, or some sort of process and procedures documented. So that way it's not as reliant upon the, the, the owner of the business. You even have some friends that have benefited from this owner centralization in the, in the fact that they've built a business. They've got the right processes and procedures in place to where they were able to sell it or transition it to somebody else. And then they, the, those new owners couldn't properly run it. And your friends got to step back in and buy back that business. Yes. And that's not that uncommon. <clears throat> it's not ideal though. It's not something that you want right. to set up that way. Um, but if, if there is tribal knowledge involved and you're the one that really knows how, the, what the secret sauce of the business is, yeah. and you sell that business, and then eventually if that business tanks and you come buy it back for pennies on the dollar that you sold it for, I mean, then you could essentially revive the business. But um, the, the intention for, for all business owners should be building the business with the exit in mind, yeah. right? And, and if that's the case, if you're thinking about the exit when you're starting the business, you're setting a path forward so that if there are any unforeseen events, death, distress, disability, whatever it is, you know that you have enterprise value built in that business and that you can get, you know, the money that you deserve that, you know, the, the blood and sweat and tears that you put into that business, you're going to get paid for it. Yeah. And so you, you help with this, um, sort of offering through Morton called the strategist where you and your team of, and your network of professionals outside these walls, can go in and help a business owner first identify where they're at in the life cycle of their business, where they're trying to go and put together the right team in order to maximize that value um, for them. And it could be as little as, do we have the right company structure for a potential exit? Yeah. If you are a yeah. C-Corp, what are some options that you have? Do you qualify for you know qualified small business stock, USBS? Yeah. All of those different teams and team members to outline the different areas that they need to work on to maximize that growth. But then most importantly, you help them understand what do we need to sell this for to replace the income that I need to live the lifestyle that my family and myself are accustomed to. Is that yeah. Right? So, I mean, I take the role as an exit planning advisor. <clears throat> my main job is one, to do an assessment on the business and get a valuation done. We don't do the valuation. Right? We have valuation specialists who we get that valuation done. Once we've got a, a pulse on the business and we understand where the red flags are and we've got that valuation, then we take them through through cash flow planning. We want to identify that wealth gap. Yeah. So we'll look at their income and expenses and we'll look at their outside assets and their liabilities and then we'll understand, okay, you need to sell your business for $5 million on a net after tax basis for you to continue the lifestyle that you have now, but your business is only valued at $4 million. How can we get it from 4 to $5 million? Well, now we go back and look at the assessment and you know you don't have... Um, really the structure in place that's necessary, right? You, you don't have, you know, a, a, a second in command, you know, a strong management team. So these are things that we could bring in other professionals. We could bring in business coaches. We could bring in a CFO for hire. There's a lot of other professionals that we have on our network that we can bring in to support the owner so that we can get them to that valuation so that they could sell the business and, and live the retirement that they want. The, what we do best is we manage money, right? So we're doing the cash flow planning and then we're, taking that lump sum and we're investing it to replace the, the income. We don't do a lot of the other things, but we spend a lot of time developing relationships with people who are great at what they do, whether it's an M&A attorney, whether it's a business broker, whether it's an investment banker. Those are the guys that we're building relationships with so that when we need to bring them into the team, the business owner can stay focused on the business. They don't have to go and find this professional out in the wild. We have it available. They focus on the business. We build the team around them and take them through that exit. Now, for the people that don't know Mike Rudeau, you love being a coach. You yeah. love helping people execute on the business plan or the life plan that they have, whether it's personal fitness or business related or sales 
or just networking and connecting with other people. Why are you so passionate about being Coach Mike and helping business owners? Well, I mean, it's easy to to have ambitions and to have a goal. And we all have these dreams that we want to accomplish. The hard part is creating a path to get us there, right? And I want to empower people to be able to, to see the vision come to life, to create that path. And then give them a sense of, I'm holding you accountable to that path. Like you told me you want to accomplish this because, you know, you want to, you know, sell the business to your kids. Well, an internal transition is tough. How are we going to structure that transition? What's that going to look like? How are we going to replace the income? But for, to educate owners on optionality, on what their exit paths, <laughs> different exit paths could look like and what their options are, it, it'll allow them to, to be able to make the decision to accomplish their goals, yeah. right? The goal is for me to, to educate and then allow the owners to make the decision, right? I'm not trying to take away control. I'm not trying to make decisions for them. And it's the same in fitness. And I want to understand what people's goals are. I want to show them the path, the different paths that they can take to get to that goal and what the you know, different variables and potential outcomes for those paths are, and then have them choose, say, what path is best for you, yeah. right? And that's what I love about it because it's not a, there's no one answer to any of, any of these things. Working with business owners, uh, working with people in, in fitness, there's so many different paths that you can take and still come out to, to accomplish your goal. And it's just um, enlightening people to, to look at those different paths that they've never even thought of. I'm glad that you brought that out because it really has to do with the individual path that people are trying to take. I mean, it's easy to, it's maybe easier to identify, oh, you have a business, you want to potentially find um, an exit or sell it. Let's go get a business broker, an m and attorney and go and market out there and, and, and try to see what we can sell this business for. Yeah. But you still haven't outlined some of the key risks or you, you still haven't accomplished some of the key risks that you identify in this article. Um, are we getting the right value for this? Um, what what value or financial plan or projections have you run for your personally? And then when you do sell this business or transition it to the next generation, how are you going to spend your time? How are you going to feel 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 fulfilled? Right. Yeah. Yeah. It, with um, with exit planning, what's really interesting is you when people think of selling their business, they think oh, well, I'm just going to put my business to the market. Someone's going to want to buy it. They're going to buy it. And then I'm going to ride off into the sunset with a big check. But the more you dig into it, majority of owners don't want to sell their business to a third party. Majority of owners are thinking about legacy. They want to transition it to their employees. They want to transition it to other family members. Well, there's a lot more complexity that goes on with that, with emotions. If there's different family members who are taking on ownership with just the financial part of that can the other family members afford to buy the business so that the owner can step away and, and get that lump sum or, or that income that they need. Um, so it's not just as simple as taking a business and selling it because for the, for the majority of the times, that's not what happens. And, and what we end up seeing a lot, which is interesting, it's not that people get a business broker and get a M&A attorney and take their business for sale. It's that a big strategic buyer that's backed by private equity or some some other strategic buyer will come in and make an offer unexpectedly to a business owner. And the business owner is like, wow, you give me $10 million for my business. I haven't even thought about selling. And that seemed attractive to them. And then they're like, okay, well now they're not in a position of power. The yeah. buyers coming in they're they're in a position of power because now what happens is they start going down through that process and that buyer comes in and they're discounting the business for all of the red flags that we identify in assessment. Yeah. Right. And then at the end of the day, they now that $10 million just became $7 million. well, it's hard to back out once you've gone so far down that path. Right. So what we're trying to do is get in front of owners before someone comes in with an unsolicited offer. So that if that offer comes in one day, they've already prepared the business for a sale, right? And they, they'll come in and say, here's $10 million for your business. And I'm like, actually... We just did a valuation and, and, you know, we think we deserve 12 and here's why. Right? And, or we're on the path right. of this. And, right. Yeah. And so we're putting the power back in, in the business owner's hands as opposed to letting a strategic buyer or someone else with an unsolicited offer come in and, and take that. Yeah, Mike, I, I love so many things of what you said there. In fact, I had a client who recently sold their franchise and he chose this new, this person to sell the, the franchise to because they were going to keep one of his employees who had been managing that store for 37 years. Yeah. And he said, I felt like I had the right person because they were willing to keep my team in place, you know, yeah. a after the sale. 
and it was important to me that that I didn't disrupt their life. Yeah, and that's that goes back to the whole mindset of a business owner, right? What's really important to them? The sense of control, they're hardworking. ROI means more. Legacy, like these people want to see their business thrive after they're gone. They built that business from scratch for from the most part. And they don't want to see that business fall apart. They don't want to see those employees unhappy or, or leave the business. They've, they've grown in that business with these employees. So they're, most business owners are passionate about what's next for their employees. So having the right match when, when making a sale is also important. And, and most owners do uh, look out for their employees in that sense. Well, Mike, thank you so much for sharing you know these five key points. I mean, one of them is owner centralization, making sure that the business doesn't rely too much on the owner. Um, a key plan, a key part about all of this is the planning, the planning and what you need to do to your business to help you know increase the value. Also, knowing and having the knowledge that what you sell it for is enough for you to be able to live the life, a lifestyle that you want, the legacy that you want to leave. But then the last part is if you do sell the business and now you have the gift of time, how are you going to spend that time so that way you feel fulfilled? Those are some of the biggest takeaways that I had from this article. Yeah, absolutely. And that, that last part, right? I think when you're working with a business owner and you bring that up, a lot of times they're like, okay, but we'll talk about that later. Like it doesn't seem important to them, but as you go through the process and as things become more real to them, it's amazing. Like the, I, I have business owners who come back telling me like, I, that's all I could think about. Like it's, it's actually like now that we're talking about deal structure and we're talking, working with attorneys, like this is all becoming real. And I really do need a plan for after this because this business has been my life for the last 30 years. So you can't force it. Yeah. But at some point, it becomes it becomes so apparent to the owner that like, wow, like this, my life is going to be different moving forward. And being able to have those open and honest conversations is, I think, one of the most rewarding parts of our job because you, you can see them start to think about what that next phase of life is going to be and, and how they can accomplish those, those new dreams. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mike, and look forward to checking back in with you and seeing all of the great things that the strategist and your work with business owners has to do in the future. Thanks, Pretty.